Asante sana, asante sana for joining us for another classic episode of the Wicked Edition. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. Kama kawaida, maze, there is never a dull moment in Kenya. Uh, Iwiki Kwanza, there is new evidence which has surfaced on the concept of what a man can do, a woman can do better. Now, for those who only thought that only a cock crows at 4 a.m., well, see how this chick did it. <laughs> Uh, political temperatures also went down a degree lower this week after reports that Nairobi <laughs> Senator after reports that Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaja's academic credentials went from one to zero degrees. UDS gubernatorial aspirant Johnson Sakaja and his legal team were among the first to appear before the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission's Disputes Resolution Committee to make submissions on Sunday. His academic credentials as a holder of a legitimate university degree, a requirement for any aspirant running for the governor's position, has come into question of late. Sakaja presented a degree certificate from Teams University in Uganda for clear by the IEBC. However, a clip later surfaced online of the senator confirming that he has only attended schools around the country that has formed the basis of discussions around his qualification for the Nairobi candidature. Maze, to be honest, I did not care whether Sakaja has a degree or not because this being a political season, people will say anything. This story caught, only caught my attention when his university changed from uh, UON, that's the University of Nairobi, to Team University in Uganda. Yet there's a video, Vile Meseme Kanapo, where, uh, where he claims that he has never set foot outside Kenya for studies. I didn't Kenya in terms of education. Yeah. Education, I didn't come to Kenya, I didn't come to Nice. But your time, I didn't job resort house. While responding to your story, uh, Sakaja said that he studied online. Like, yes, I'll enter teams, but I'll study online. This was where I was like, no. No, no, no. This does not add up. Uganda and online studies. <laughs> How? How, Mazi? See, Uganda has proper internet rationing. Like, internet in Uganda is like water in Umoja. You need it, but you must learn to live without it. Now, in the past 10 years, and, and this is true, Neza Cheki, by the way, in the past 10 years, their president has switched on the internet for like four months. Ugandans cross into Kenya to tweet. Where, where, do you get, where do you get the luxury to do a degree course? Why, why do you think you only hear uh, a, a new Jose Chameleon song after 36 months? Ngoma ziko, wakona ngoma mob sana, but the 36 months is how long you need to upload a 4K video. Now, if it's true that Sakaja has not graduated, then the internet is the reason. Now, by the way, however you think about it, the internet is the main reason Sakaja has not graduated. According to him, he's a graduate. Ukingia kwa mtandao, hana degree. <laughs> what a paradox. The degree you studied for online cannot be found anywhere on the internet. Now, also in his defense, Sakaja has denied that he is not uh, Sakaja Johnson Koske, as some people are alleging. And this has been a tricky conversation about ethnicity. Kwa sababu kuna tome bring the question of whether Sakaja is from the Rift Valley ama metoka western. Haters wamesema, if Sakaja would only accept the name Koske, even the IBC cannot stop him from running without a degree. <laughs> In other news, Ugandan President uh, Yoweri Museveni this week blamed uh, Ugandan poverty on past regimes. We went back five years ago, Museveni was president. To Kenya, back at 10 years, to Kapata still, Museveni was president. Our research team went up to 30 years ago, Museveni was still the president. <laughs> so basically, 15 years ago, Museveni was the past, present, and future president. <laughs> of Uganda. Him blaming past regimes is like your father blaming your parents for the shortcomings of the family. What a classic case of admission of guilt. Now, most recently, a senior police officer made headlines after falling victim to fraudsters who stole close to 600,000 shillings from his phone. I know, to, I know what comes to mind, Ukiskia, Askaria Meibiwa. 
very long story. And this is a very familiar concept to very many Kenyans, your story of cybercrime. And a few years ago, we had a conversation on internet safety with IT guru and cybersecurity lecturer, uh, Dr. Bright Gameli. And that remains one of the episodes that carried some of the heaviest lessons on the Wicked Edition, probably one of the most talked about. Now, I also recently uh, learned that when it comes to cybersecurity, squeezy, what wanna stock? Wanna stock yana? People stalk each other in relationships at by installing spy softwares in partners' phones and even cut up calls. So to continue this conversation on internet security and to add an angle to the conversation, Dr. Bright brought with him one of the students he has mentored to help us understand what it takes kukua dangamanya on matters of the internet. Uh, what do you need to be, uh, to be safe? As in, what do you need to know to be safe from Tandao? On top of that, people have, are still losing their social media accounts despite hacker streaks being exposed left, right, and center. What are the updates that can help you and protect you from falling victim? Let's have a comprehensive conversation on this on the other end of this short commercial break. See you guys in a bit. Ah, Maze, welcome back to the Wicked Edition. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori. Conversation here to you, Leo, Iko Kwa Cyber Security. Now, how, uh, what are the resources you need? Kukua Pro, Kwa Stories, Amtandao. Our guest is here for the second time. Name Kuja Na, his mentee. A student, ako 17 years, Name Shalan. I don't know, Kama Dr. Bright, and as I say, he has learned as much as you have. Ama, how far my he has to go. Dr. Bright Gameli and Mike Chesang are in the house. <laughs> ah, was it? Was it? Asante sana. Dr. Bright, I'll just go straight sure. to the point. Uh, what, uh, what are the resources that someone needs? Uh, what are the, first of all, what are the academic qualifications uh, that someone needs to be a bright student? <laughs> <laughs> You just had to use my name, right? <laughs> well, uh, well. So, I mean, it, it's these days uh, I I say resources are available. Yes. So you don't need to necessarily, you know, back in the day, if you don't have a degree or you don't have uh, a certificate, you don't qualify to be able to do anything. Uh, this fella, Mike here, does not have a degree yet. He's still in high school, right? Yes. In high school. Yeah. yeah, I'm still in high school. Okay. Yeah. So he doesn't need to be able, but the things he can do. <laughs> Um, he's actually employable. I can actually hire him. I actually do hire him to do some of the work that I have to do. So you, the skills are there. The resources are there. They're all on YouTube. They're on the internet. They're cheaper to actually get access to. Or most of them are even free. So I tell people everything is available online for you to be able to get access to, to become, uh, to become very good at what you, what you are, okay. what you can be. So, so, Mike, how much can you do with what you have learned? How long have you been under Dr. Bright? I've actually been under Dr. Brett for over seven, seven years or so. Over seven years. Yeah. So yeah. you started with Dr. Bright as a 10-year-old. Yeah, I did. It was very interesting. The first time I sent him an email telling him I want to get into hacking without knowing anything at all. That's when he invited me into a conference. Then I got to know Dr. Bright. Yeah. Ah, okay. People <coughs> your age are doing wonders in Bomet. <laughs> 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 uh, by the way, how, how, how do you make sure he's not tempted to visit people's bank accounts? Well, yes. I mean, so the mentorship that I provide is not for him to become a bad person. The, the skills shortage of a cybersecurity engineer worldwide has, has, is, has really gone high. It, we need more people who can actually become cybersecurity engineers. So what I wanted to do is, so he, he, he's one of the many. There are a few others. But it's very, I don't just take anybody. I, I require them to, t to have certain kind of discipline. So if you don't have that discipline, I don't take into my mentorship program. And he has been very disciplined um, to be able to do what the kind of things he, do, he wants okay. to do. How so, much have you learned under Bright? Like, uh, what is your capacity in terms of things that you can do? In terms of things I can do, um, honestly, I've reached a level where I can like, work professionally like in a corporate company. Yeah? Um, this is due to like, quite a lot of like, training, like, over the seven years. Like you can work in a corporate company? Yes. Have you reached the level you can Uneza <laughs> Yes. You can do anything you want on the internet? Not anything necessarily. Yes. But I'm able to, for example, what hackers usually do is find vulnerabilities in important services such as a website or any mobile application. Yeah. 
Or I'm able to just find those vulnerabilities before they're being exploited by someone who akitaka kujiongeza mshara. Ah. Okay. Sawa sawa. And uh, Dr. Bright, yes. for the ordinary person like yeah. me out there yeah. who wants to know like uh, I, I can't say study IT yes or rather I have not set a, a set out to study IT as you or or Mike here what are the principles of safety online so there's quite a lot um, I'll start with the basic bit email email security forms the basis of your security so if you don't know how to secure your email you are basically going to be exploited easily so I wanted to do a little bit of an experiment that would take a minute um, here could I, could I borrow your email address, if you don't mind? Yes. So, uh, as you can see right now, he has his email. Um, he has his laptop with him. He has his email. And... Um, sure. Just one minute. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. Should I delete something before you hack in? <laughs> <laughs> so, his email got it, which is that... Uh, so he's not touching his laptop, as you can see. I'm going to send that email to myself, okay? So I'll send it to my email. What do you want me to say as the email subject? Uh, Jake what? <laughs> uh, say, say Juja, say Juja. Juja. Yes. And the message should be, we are doing... Make it a lie. We are learning. We're doing a live <laughs> learning hacking. And in the next five seconds, I have forced an email from you to myself. Okay. You won't see it in your outbox. It's not there. Okay. <laughs> you so, think. And I'm going to show you how easily it is. So that email has been sent from you. Um, and I'm just going to open it here for you to see right here if you can zoom in just a little bit maybe you can blur out the bottom but you can see at this place here Dr. Kingori has uh, sent an email to me and you, it, it even has your picture yeah. So, in fact, let me reply to you. <laughs> and, the, and the message, as you can see there, is what? Can you see? We are doing a live learning. So, what you're saying is, once someone has an e your email address, they can send an email to anyone as you. Well, if you have the skills that we have. Okay. I've replied to you. You should be getting a message. We can read it out loud. Ah, hacked. Hacked. Also on your laptop, so you can see on the laptop, you can show the camera. Okay. Sawa, sawa. So email serves as the base of anything. Hackers these days are trying to exploit email systems or they find ways to be able to do that. Now, everything has what to call a two-step verification, right? Two-step verification is basically ways of you being able to make sure that even if somebody has the password to your email, they will be able, you actually get a, a second authentication to your phone before it actually before, before they try to log in. So okay. assuming I have your password. Yes. Right now I did without a password. But if in case I had your password and I want to log into your email, I will, you actually get an alert, right? You yes. get an alert. What I just showed you right now is the same what you call phishing. It's what people are doing to actually get into your Instagram, your Facebook, your account. Okay. So they send an email purporting that it looks like it came from Instagram. It looks like it came from Facebook or Twitter or anything then you are trying to log in. If I was to do this in the proper way, you actually get a right, proper um, look-alike, a feed. Okay. Right. So, so. Yes. And why are people still losing social media accounts despite being told, hey, don't click this link, don't do this? Why are people still falling victim? Hackers are getting better these days. And this, the tools <coughs> that they're trying to use to hack are open source. They are available. They are, they, are, they, are, they are practically everywhere. So sometimes it's not you're doing. You know, you need to... It's, it's not everybody who have the... The, the, the awareness that we're getting right now is why we have this show that you can actually see what the mistake is. Sometimes it comes looking so real that you, cannot, you can't tell the difference between a fake one and a real one. So we need to be very vigilant as to how we can able to stop that. In case you actually lose access to your, say, for example, Instagram, 
there's a recovery process. I left one on my, if you check my Instagram page, I left um, a highlight which shows exactly how to recover your Instagram account. Because Instagram sees your face, it knows your face, it has an official recognition to know that it is actually you. So you need to have a lot more pictures of yourself on Instagram to recover. If you have a Twitter, Twitter, Gmail, I get a lot of those requests almost every week, almost daily. You need to actually follow the recovery process. But the thing is, everything is linked to what? Email. So if you secure your email with two-step verification, with backup codes that it gives you already, you will be able to actually get access back to your email, your, your social media accounts very easily. The same applies to the same applies to all the other social media accounts. All of them. Mm -hmm. All of them. There's uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, even WhatsApp has two-step verification, if you don't okay. know. Okay. And most people don't actually use it. So please activate those two-step verification. Go to the privacy settings. <coughs> check what privacy settings that are there to make sure that you're secure. The security features are there. Okay. But people don't spend time to go through them to be able to make sure they can be secure. Okay. Yeah. So, so, and uh, what stands out about Mike? Chesang uh, from your other students and uh, what would you identify or for a parent out there used to identify that their kid has uh, potential yeah. in being an IT guru? Let me tell you something. When I saw Mike and I told him I, I can mentor him, um, there, was, there was no pushback from the family. The family is like, look, take him, go ahead, do whatever you have to make sure that he's just doing the doing what he has to do. But Mike is a very diligent person. He's very dedicated. He's very respectful. He's very open to sharing ideas and all, open to also teaching other people. The other day, Mike did a presentation to about 12,000 students online. He did a presentation at one of the conferences that I run called Africa Hack on, in front of 500 people. And that's because he listens. He's been able to actually say, I'll take the lessons that you've taught me and I'll have to share as well. So the more he shares, the more he learns. That is something which I don't find with a lot of people or sometimes parents are also the hindrance to actually getting me to actually get some of the mentees. So like, I love to mentor, but I don't spoon feed. Mike, I tell him, look, you go read where the guests are come. When you're doing an exam online with the skill set that you have, how <laughs> do you beat the temptation of hacking the answers? Well, by reading. <laughs> Serious? Yeah, yeah. Like if you came across something you didn't know and you're doing the exam online? Yeah. Uh, I just have to fill the question. That's you it. fail because you want? Not because I want, because ethics. ethics. It's, I have to be ethical with it. Really? Yes. Like you know where you can get the answers on your laptop, but just because you're an ethical person, you will not go that extra mile. Yes, it's not. You will not go to page two, as Dr. Bright said. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Hey. Yes. And what motivates you to stay in school? And Dr. Bright himself, the guru, has said that you're ripe <clears throat> enough for the job market. Well, uh, Are you delaying for others to be employed? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, as you said, uh, Dr. Bright, he has his PhD. Like one of, he got his PhD, like uh, one of the youngest in Korea. I uh, also want to like achieve something similar to that uh, later on in the future. Ah, so yeah. uh, okay, so it's just for the sake. You can do it, but you just need to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I also still I don't know everything, and I, there's never like a shortage of knowledge. So I'm always like learning and learning. I'm never bored of learning. I make references to movies a lot. I've <coughs> seen uh, places where a student has outdone the master. Have you ever tried a Dr. Bright? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, so you're still a coward student. <laughs> <laughs> I try to achieve as much as I can. That's okay. what I strive for. Okay. And how do you apply your skills in cybersecurity in your daily lives? I still, I'm still in school. I'm still in high school. So I still do subjects like physics and you know economics. So. Uh, I actually use some of these skills to actually do research and it's very fast. Like one of the things we used to find information about someone, something called Google Docking. Yeah? Google? Like, Google Docking. Docking, D-O-R-K-I-N-G. Yeah. Like if you wanted to get like specific, like your email or like your phone number, I'll use such, such methods, Google uh, indexes, to like find that information. Now I actually use that to like do my research and to actually, you know, is my work. I mean, because I'm not going to work hard. Yeah, because with that, you, the way you normally search Dr. Kingori, you get so many, so many searches. We can, we can actually use Google Docker to search specifically every Microsoft Word document that ever exists on every website. 
which has your name in it. And this is open for everybody? It's open for everybody. It's, it's actually a feature on Google. Um, so anybody can learn it. You can use it to find specific books, specific games, specific documents, specific. So instead of him going through the whole headache of searching for things that he can't get access to easily, he's using his hacking skills to get books to read, um, very good videos to actually watch and be able to learn something better for his normal everyday schoolwork. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so it means you don't pay for Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I can neither deny nor agree. <laughs> okay, but just for the sake, give us a site where we can find the best movies. The best movies? Yes. Netflix. <laughs> no, uh, the site, yeah, for the ordinary folks. As in, like, now you've taught me uh, Google Docking. I'm about mm -hmm. to Google myself. See pictures of me as a baby that I've never posted on the internet? Actually, it's easy. Yeah. If you put index dot off, and then? and then the space, put them any movie you're looking for. Any movie? Yeah. yeah. Put any movie. Put, let's say, Captain Marvel. Uh, my favorite movie, The Last Castle. OK. Uh-huh. So whatever is shown you, let me see. Data, movies, uh, Hulu, 2001. But the disclaimer, some yes. of those websites might contain malwares, so be careful as to some of the websites you go to. Okay. So, if you open it. Uh, I think the... Your internet is down. You know, <laughs> this safety thing, so the internet is low kidogo, but... Yeah, but if it opens, you off, basically yes. have access to that movie. You can, and you can download watch it directly from the server. Wow, and you can actually stream it. Yeah. Uh, streaming yeah. for some of the sites, but this is mostly for downloading. Ah, yeah. very fast. Yes. But that depends on your bundles. So that is... Uh, it? it depends on your bundles. That exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So this is actually publicly available, um, but these are vulnerabilities on websites that they did not secure properly. Okay. So you're not abusing. You're only borrowing, right? Okay. Uh, however, whatever you do on those websites, if you legally, if they have a copyright issue there, then you're actually violating them. Otherwise, you're actually having access to these this movies and series and everything for free. What are some of the basic skills everyone should have? One, I'll tell, I'll tell parents to be able to be open to, for the kids to learn anything digital. They should, they should allow the kids to be able to pursue some of these courses. Uh, some parents tell me, oh, we want our son to be a lawyer. And they're forcing the son to be a lawyer, yet the son is a really good coder. He's a really good coder in the Python language, which I'm not the best, right? So we need parents to be able to allow the kids to explore some of these digital skills. Everybody, we just saw um, the... The Ministry of ICT has launched um, coding in, in all curricula, in, uh, coding curriculum in schools. Right now, we need everybody to have basic coding skills. That's what's going to elevate you to the next level of the studies. And available resources, use Google, use YouTube. Learn something before you even go to a mentor to be able to assist you further. Okay. Sawa, sawa. Uh, most interesting thing about what you... What, at 10 years old, how did you choose... Um, how did you know that this is the path you want to take? Oh, my. I'm, I was still 10 at the time, so for me, it was personally a game. Uh, I used to game a lot, so there's a game called Watch Dogs, and it's basically about hacking. I'm like, I'm going to try this, yeah? You want that? Yeah, so I did research, and I uh, came upon Brett Gamaly, and yeah, that's when I... Okay. Imagine, interesting yeah. vibes interesting vibes so even when you came on the show i think uh, one or two years ago yeah, you already had him he was here him. yes he was here with he works with me everywhere i go for such uh, conferences so i like to mentor him by <coughs> taking him to my workshops conferences sometimes i want him to be next to me that he can actually show people okay. how to do certain things and how <coughs> can parents who are watching yes. access you to have you train their students and what are the costs because of course, getting on the internet is not free. Yeah, so I, I, I don't just take anyone. So I like people to be able to come with something. If they try to research a few before coming to me, my website is brightzed.com. They can find it there. Or they go to adplist.com. So on ADP list, you'll find I have a schedule. You can actually book a session with me from there, and then we get to engage. Okay. Yeah. It's affordable for... I, I, I usually, for mentorship for me, like what Africa Hackon does, Africa Hackon does not charge. We have free training that is coming up in, in a lot of universities. We have a monthly meetup that happens, and tickets get sold out. The ticket is free. So it okay. gets sold out in less than two hours. It happens every last um, Wednesday of the month. Okay. So please watch out for those on our Twitter handles, Africa Hackon, Bright Z on, on, on Twitter. 
you will find that we are teaching and we are learning. We are trying to get to share knowledge everywhere. Your teacher cannot tell you anything about online learning, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you are the guru of the internet. Bright Mazia Asante Sana for coming. Mike, uh, Karibuni Tena na Tena. You're welcome back in, uh, again and again on the show. Yeah. I wish we could go to specifics about um, uh, cyber security in terms of banking, ETC. Yeah. Uh, I believe that should be our next conversation. Sure. Banking how to protect your money yeah. uh, and keep it safe. And I think I'm not convinced about how holy you can be on the internet and to fail an exam knowing where the answers are. <laughs> I don't know what kind of teaching that is. And Bright is also a martial artist. Yes, Kung Fu. I Kabisa. do practice Kung Fu. Uh, I got injured a few months ago, but I'm still trying to get back into it. Oh, uh, yeah. So you're not only in cyber security, but Ukumbaka. physical security as uh, well. Physical security. <laughs> <laughs> How's your kung fu? Can you do Jackie Chan? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I am happy with kung fu, bright. I might just say. But this is is na kwanga tuma. You can't go the, with this in a real fight. You, you can. see fire. If you want to try, bring yourself here. No, no like honestly, bright. Someone on a Russian gumi, you're still arranging yourself. You don't, you don't arrange ourselves. We already have this. So we wait for you to come first. Oh, so you're killing time. Yeah. Ah, sawa, sawa. <laughs> That's it for the weekend edition. See you next week. My name is Dr. King Ori.